right. Thank you, everyone. Um, we'll have a memorial to him in the newsletter, as Michael talked about. And uh, you know, we're gathering pictures of him. He was, uh, and, and he was always where we needed him. Um, we were short of Santa at the last Santa train. He was a Santa Claus, and he was a he was a good Santa Claus, uh, you know. Um, so, uh, thank you, everyone. In terms of news for the good of the club, the, the big news today, and it's related to the corridor, is that Amtrak uh, just committed to seventy three billion dollars billion dollars, I think, for a, a new train sets for the Northeast Corridor. They'll be multi-powered. They'll be battery electric and diesel. And uh, this will be interesting. The, the details of what exactly they are remains to be seen. But uh, um, they will. They, they look like they're going to be some form of diesel MU. Uh, it looked like there were passenger compartments behind the cab. So, so we'll see. But um, uh, that indeed is good news. Okay, we appear to be all set on Facebook. Uh, so Mike, whenever you wanna turn it over to Adam for his presentation, we're good to go. Okay, well, let's turn it over to Adam. We're all looking forward to seeing this show. The Northeast Corridor is one of the most important arteries since the day it was built. You know, uh, the first tunnels through Manhattan. Um, so it, it's, uh, you know, it's a big part of our lives here. And if you, you notice the, you know, we're the densest populated state in the United States. And if you look at a population map, almost all of that density is along the Northeast Corridor. So it's had a huge impact on our state. So uh, thank you, Adam, looking forward to the show. Thank you very much for having me. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Adam Reich. I'm the secretary of the Tri-State Railway Historical Society, um, a lawyer by day, amateur photographer by afternoon and night. Um, so this evening, I plan on sharing with you uh, some of my photos on the Northeast Corridor throughout the years while giving you a brief history. So let's go ahead and get started with the presentation. Okay. So here we have um, as our opening shot, uh, train 89, the Palmetto, arriving in Metro Park on the morning of January 3rd, 2018. So first let's start with a brief overview of the ownership of the corridor. Um, New Jersey Railroad history really begins in 1815 with the chartering of the New Jersey Railroad Company. Um, it was created with a charter to build a line between Trenton to the Raritan River in or near New Brunswick. The New Jersey Railroad Company, however, never amounted to more than being a paper corporation. Railroading physically begins in New Jersey with the chartering of the Camden and Amboy Railroad and Transportation Company in 1830. The Camden and Amboy, uh, together with the Delaware and Raritan, became vital for transportation in New Jersey. They formed an alliance around 1831. Uh, Camden and Amboy began service with the Borden Town to Heights Town Line opening in on October 1st of 1832. Uh, in 1834, they extended southward to Camden. Uh, 1838, we had the Warden Town to Trenton segment open. On the other end of the corridor in New Jersey, we had the New Jersey Railroad and Transportation Company chartered in 1832, start off with a line between Newark and Jersey City in 1834. By 1836, they made it down to the north shore of the Raritan River with ferries connecting people to New Brunswick on the south side. By 1838, they made it to New Brunswick proper. In 1839, they extended the line to Millstone Junction, um, linking to the Camden and Amboy there. Camden and Amboy, New Jersey Railroad and Transportation Company, and the Delaware and Raritan formed an informal alliance, the United New Jersey Railroad and Canal Companies in 1867. Um, in the 1850s and 60s, you also saw the realignment of the train tracks in central Jersey uh, because of soil conditions, they shifted the tracks from where they started off initially, including spots like Princeton to the point you see them now running through West Windsor, Trenton, uh, leading up to New Brunswick. 
Pennsylvania Railroad came in in 1871, took out a 990 year, 999 year lease on the United New Jersey Railroad and Canal Companies. And with that, um, you saw a lot of innovation along the corridor. You saw uh, the building of the North River Tunnels. You saw electrification come in the 1930s, uh, coming 1933 between Jersey City and Philadelphia. During this era, as we get later on to the 1960s, you see the New Jersey Department of Transportation beginning to subsidize commuter service in the state. As we get to 1968, the Pennsylvania Railroad merges with the New York Central and Penn Central becomes the owner of the line through New Jersey. Penn Central, as we know, didn't fare very well. So ultimately it and other Northeast railroads went bankrupt or were on the brink of bankruptcy. With that, you had Congress Act passing the Railroad Revitalization and Reform Act or 3R Act in, I believe, 1973. Uh, it formed the US Railroad Administration. It led to the formation of Conrail and also saw the shifting of ownership of the Northeast Corridor throughout much of the corridor itself, including New Jersey, from Penn Central to Amtrak upon the formation of Conrail in 1976. Part of that 3R Act also gave the New Jersey Department of Transportation the option of acquiring uh, the, a lot of the commuter only stations on the Northeast Corridor, an option they exercised in 1978. And as I understand, I think had to work on some settlement issues through the early 80s. So with that, you saw um, the changing of ownership of a lot of stations over to uh, the state of New Jersey and later New Jersey Transit. Uh, Conrail continued to operate the commuter service after its formation in 1976, while Amtrak operated the intercity service along the corridor beginning on May 1st, 1971. Uh, the Northeastern Rail Services Act of 1981 relieved Conrail of the obligation to provide commuter service. With that, New Jersey Transit began taking responsibility for operating the trains that the state had been subsidizing um, beginning on January 1st, 1983. So today, the Northeast Corridor Line we know and love in New Jersey includes Amtrak and New Jersey Transit as operators, as well as SEPTA at the Trenton end of the line. Um, today, the Trenton to Camden segment of the old Camden and Amboy is now part of the river line uh, that connects Trenton to Camden. So for tonight, the, the way I'm going to go through this presentation is take you through some of the different points of interest, including all the stations, um, give you a little bit of the history, show you a mix of the ordinary and the unusual. Um, so I hope in particular you stick around for um, when we get to Princeton Junction, Hamilton, and Trenton, um, a few incidents I happened to catch, you know, either on the way from home from work or otherwise. So um, certainly some stuff you uh, will not see every day. So we begin with the North River Tunnels. The view you see here is um, a shot I took while on a Northeast Regional en route to Boston, uh, riding in business class. I had the rear window at my uh, disposal at the end of the train. So you can see this is um, the view just after we had entered the tunnel. The train is heading towards New York. We are looking back towards New Jersey. And here you have a more complete view of uh, what you see when you basically first come out or last go into the tunnels. The North River Tunnels were built between 1902 and 1910. Um, in the early years, third rail was the electrification used in Penn Station and through the tunnels, Pennsylvania Railroad trains would switch between diesel and steam at the Manhattan Transfer Station where passengers could also connect to the Hudson and Manhattan Railroad lines controlled by the Pennsylvania Railroad to Jersey City and Lower Manhattan. In the 1930s, Catenary was installed um, as part of the electrification of uh, the Northeast Corridor first between linking New York and Philadelphia and later uh, continuing down to Washington, DC. The tunnels were flooded, unfortunately, with Hurricane Sandy in 2012. Because of that, um, there is going to come a point in time within the coming years where Amtrak will have to close them down for major repairs. Um, part of the big push for the Gateway project is to add two new tracks and tunnels going into New York, partially to add capacity, but also partially to 
ensure continuity while these tunnels, the existing tunnels are shut down for repair. So as we go further into New Jersey, we had our first stop, Secaucus Junction. This shot you see is looking east on the morning of November 30th, 19, uh, sorry, 2018. Um, just a colorful morning with colorful skies. Um, we, the Secaucus Junction Station opened December 15th, 2003, connecting virtually all of New Jersey Transit's lines except for the Atlantic City line. Um, Raritan Valley line service didn't initially go to Secaucus Junction, but it now does with the trains that run directly to and from New York. Uh, Secaucus has two levels. The upper level is the Northeast Quarter, which you see here. Uh, the lower level has the Main Bergen, Pascack Valley, and uh, Meadowland Shuttle Service. This is a view looking west. We have AEM 7AC 901 leading a Northeast Regional into the station on July 9th, 2011. Uh, 901 had the honor of being the first AEM 7 put into revenue service. Specifically on May 9th of 1980, it led Metro Liner Service Train 108 from Washington, D.C. to New York. Um, unfortunately for 901, Sea Caucus in the area of Portal Bridge was the site of a derailment where it and another locomotive, I believe it was 910, on the fast mail uh, were involved in a derailment in 1996. Uh, later on in 2000, the original DC propulsion in 901 was upgraded to AC traction um, and the unit uh, returned to service in August, uh, on August 16th of 2000. Another look westbound, we see here an Atlantic City Express or ACES train. Uh, the way this operation worked when it was uh, in service between February 2009 and September 2011 was uh, trains would originally out of New York, stop at Newark Penn Station, uh, from there run to shore interlocking in Philadelphia, reverse direction, and then proceed on the Atlantic City line to Atlantic City. Um, the service, while sponsored by casinos in the hope of um, drawing patronage, didn't quite uh, live up to expectations. So the last run of these trains occurred in September of 2011 and the service was uh, formally announced as discontinued uh, on March 9th of 2012. This is um, at the east end of the station. We're looking west in the direction of the North River Tunnels in New York. We have AM 7 ac 946 leading a westbound regional. Uh, 946 was one of two locomotives that had uh, the honor of being the last AEM 7s in scheduled Amtrak service this coming in 2016. Uh, we're going to shift to the other end of the board of Rosetta in Washington, D.C. You have here um, the AEM 7 farewell excursion, uh, the shot coming at Union Station, Washington, D.C. on June 18th, 2016. And um, you can see 946 was the trailing unit with 942 being the leader. Uh, the, the object you see the gentleman on the left holding is actually a new old stock number port. Passengers on board the uh, farewell special had the opportunity to purchase new old stock number boards for the AM7s. In one case, I think somebody even got to purchase a, a bell set. Um, so, you know, many of us came away happy, not just with the excursion, but with a nice memento from the AEM7s themselves. Here we have 904 uh, heading east through Secaucus Junction Station. This is um, on the upper level We're at the west end of the station looking west. This is, I think, probably the Silver Meteor, judging by the fact that we have three sleeping cars in the consist. Um, it's also interesting to note it's that brief period of time where you had view liner twos entering service, but still had the AEM sevens in operation. So um, this shot for reference came on July 4th of 2015. Um, incidentally, 904 was the number board I happened to purchase uh, with the farewell excursion I mentioned just before. Here we're um, again at the east end of the station looking east. We have the New Jersey Transit Out 46A leading a seven multi-levels into the station on August 8th, 2015. Um, 
Next up, we're going to go to the lower level since it's a chance to see a more expansive view of the station and also some nice diesel equipment that you won't see in regular service on the corridor. Uh, we have a fan favorite uh, CNJ GP40 Heritage Unit 4109 um, painted in the heritage scheme in uh, 2019 and it's part of the celebration of uh, New Jersey Transit's 40th anniversary. Here you get a little more of an expansive view of the station, including uh, the dome for the rotunda on the upper level. Um, great thing about this shot is you have F40 PH2 cats 4119 and 4120. Um, the date of this photo is September 30th, 2020. The other photo for reference was June 4th, 2020. So these units were out of service for a number of years, or at least in non-revenue service. 2020 saw them reactivated. So, you know, certainly great to get another bite at the apple as far as seeing these in action. Um, this is the early days of them being put back into service where they were being run together just in case something went wrong with one unit, having that redundancy there. Um, you know, with new Alp 45 dual modes coming into New Jersey Transit as we speak, we don't know how much longer these two units will be in service. So certainly something if you get the chance to see them, you know, take in the action, grab a few photos, whatever you can do, enjoy them while they're still here, because they certainly are an American classic as many of us would agree. As we move down the line, we get to Harrison and we also get to uh, the Dock Tower and Bridge that connects Harrison to Newark. Harrison has a path station that does not have a New Jersey Transit or Amtrak stop. Um, Harrison first saw Hudson and Manhattan service beginning in 1911. Uh, the current station site uh, entered into service uh, in 1937 as part of a realignment of the Hudson and Manhattan. Uh, in recent years, the station has been extensively renovated where you have a new head house, you have completely new platforms. Uh, I'll give the history on Dock Tower in a couple of minutes since it overlaps uh, with Newark Penn Station in essence. Here, the train you see is headed east um, on February 20th, 2011. So here we are, this is a shot of the Harrison Station. We're looking west, uh, you can see Dock Bridge in the background, uh, as well as portions of the New York skyline, uh, Newark skyline rather. Um, and a set of AFPA five cars. This is another one of those August 2017 shots from the rear of a regional. Here's a closer look at uh, Dock Bridge. Again, we're still on the Harrison side. You have an East Bandicella that is moving uh, towards Newark Penn. Now this shot, um, here we have a pair of HHB8 electrics uh, leading a long distance train into Newark, crossing the bridge. Uh, the reason I show this shot is to uh, put in a little bit of a personal touch for me. Uh, I'm a lawyer by trade. I was a law student at Seton Hall Law from 2010 to 2013. Um, anybody who is a lawyer or knows a lawyer knows that, you know, for most, long hours in the library are part of the law school experience. Fortunately for me, this was the view I got to enjoy for two of my three years. Um, by that third year, uh, you had the Panasonic building constructed where you see that parking lot in the foreground. So with that, um, a lot of this view went away. So the remaining shots you're gonna see of the bridge in the area are coming from either the law library or uh, the parking garage at the Seton Hall Law. Here's a close-up of the bridge. The shot coming on uh, March 16th, 2011. Uh, it's not often you see the bridge open. Um, luckily, I had my camera nearby on February 7th when it did open to allow this barge to pass through. And uh, if you look closely, you can see a small orange figure on the Harrison side uh, getting ready to inspect it once it's back down. Close up, you can see uh, the Amtrak tra track crew getting ready to inspect it once everything is locked back in place. We have uh, here another ACES train. Uh, this coming on May 11th, 2011. I believe this might have been actually a test or a non or non revenue run, perhaps a training run of some sort. Given that the pans, if you look closely on the Alp 44 are down, um, you also have here one of the older path sets uh, coming through on the upper tracks. 
plus the uh, New York City skyline and some of Red Bull Arena in the background. Now this isn't the Northeast Corridor. This is the Morristown line. Um, this is viewed from the garage at Seton Hall Law. And you now it's my chance to show something of significance to the club. Um, on the right side, you see um, Alco C424, number 19. It's been part of the Tri-State collection for a few years since the Morristown and Erie retired it. Um, you know, part of what we do besides our meetings and our presentations, as Kevin spoke to earlier, is preserving equipment. So, you know, I would certainly encourage those of you listening in, um, anything you can do to contribute, help us with our mission, whether that's a donation, time, um, learning more about us, you know, please do so. There's a lot of great work we do. And it's, you know, we certainly hope that we can pass equipment like the 19 down to future generations. Here we have a, a path train that's a BA5 cars. Um, I don't know if it was on the ascent towards Dock Bridge to your right or descending towards Harrison on the left, but um, certainly a great uh, vantage point with a good perspective on the New York City skyline, including the Empire State Building, Chrysler Building. And you can even figure out where Penn Station and Grand Central would be roughly by the MetLife Building and the uh, one Penn Plaza building visible in this shot. So of course we get across the river and we're at Newark Penn Station. Um, Newark Penn Station's predecessors were on near the same site, although on the opposite side of the tracks you had um, Market Street Station was the historic station there. Um, you had, I think, at least two iterations of the station, um, the last of which came in the 1890s. Uh, at the turn of the 20th century, Newark and the Pennsylvania Railroad reached an agreement to elevate the tracks. Um, and then uh, in the late 1920s, 1930s, you had work begin on Newark Penn Station itself. Uh, the first phase opened in 1935. You had three tracks for the Pennsylvania Railroad along with the station building you see here. Um, the later phases culminated in 1937 with uh, the remaining tracks opening up uh, including not just for the Pensy, but also for the Hudson and Manhattan now path. Um, and you had the extension of the city subway. Um, in the case of the Hudson and Manhattan, um, the opening of Newark Penn marked the closure of Manhattan transfer, as well as uh, its old Park Place terminal. And you had the realignment of Harrison Station to its present site, um, with Newark becoming the changeover point for the Pennsylvania Railroad, as well as the terminus. The shot we have here comes from February 13th of 2011. Here we have an Alp 44 um, arriving in the station with a Northeast quarter train um, en route to Trenton. This shot comes from Hoboken, but it's a car that saw a lot of time on the Northeast quarter. This was Comet 25459. Um, this is the public portion of the car. The other portion on the other side was uh, the Jersey Shore Commuter Club's leased portion. The Jersey Shore Commuter Club ran a commuter club between 1933 and 2013. Um, the other side of this car, which I don't have shots of because I wasn't a member of the commuter club, um, had basically Amfleet style reclining seats and tables. Um, it was a private club you'd pay extra membership for. Unfortunately, this car, would, this car made it the last one in October, 2012, at least in this form. Um, it was left in Bayhead Yard, which flooded with Hurricane Sandy. Um, with that, the club was not able to get up and running again and it dissolved in 2013. Um, you know, the, the history dates back many years on the North Jersey coastline. Uh, sadly, 2013 marked the end. Going back to Newark Penn Station itself, we have out 46A, 4663, looking all shiny and pretty. Um, brand new at this point, the shot coming on April 28th of 2011. Um, being new, it's paired up with uh, another unit as uh, a redundancy measure. Um, if you look to the right here, you can see the Raritan Valley line train sitting on track five. 
A few days later, we have uh, on May 11th, 2011, New Jersey Transit unveiling its first ALP 45 dual mode locomotive capable of running on both diesel and catenary wire, um, paired up with the last ALP 46A in its class, number 4664. Um, both brand spanking new, nice and shiny. Sadly, they don't look quite that pristine today, but as they say, as long as the trains run on time. Here's a, a look from the other end. You know, we're on track one looking, uh, here's a close up of the 46A, 4664. Gives you a little bit more of a comparison between the two units. Here we have a pair of AEM7s leading an eastbound train onto track A at the station on May 22nd, 2011. Next is a Raritan Valley line train with a set of Comet cars. Um, this was May 24th, 2011. And one reason I like this scene is you don't see the Comet 4 running as cab cars anymore. Um, as I understand it, it's in large part a structural consideration um, with the Comet 4 cabs. As you, the engineer side, as you can see, doesn't have a door. Um, but the opposite side, there is one that serves both high and low look platforms. So with that, there's the potential for it to be a crumple zone in the event of the collision. Uh, the Comet 5s will serve as cab cars um, for all single level trains, as I understand, because they're a little more hardened by comparison. Um, they don't have the steps. They only have access for high platforms on, uh, on the fireman side. So um, with that, uh, as I understand it, there's a little more of a safety capability there. So I don't know exactly when these last runs occurred, but they did um, for the Comet Force as cab cars, but I don't think it was too long after this. Uh, going ahead to August 30th, 2011, we have what I think was a North Jersey coastline train heading east from the station. You have a GP40 FH paired with one of the GP40 PHs um, heading east from the station. So nice little bit of exhaust as the train uh, heads across Dockbridge towards uh, uh, the Hudson Yards of the Meadows Maintenance Complex. For many years, Newark had a Solari flatboard display as its departure board. You can see uh, April 30th, 2011 wasn't a particularly good day for New Jersey Transit or Amtrak. I think this was in the aftermath of uh, Hurricane Irene. So with that, you can see, unfortunately, a lot of cancellations and a few delays. The board has been replaced in recent, in recent years with a digital display. Fortunately, New Jersey Transit and Amtrak, to their credit, um, pay homage to the original board by animating it and putting in the sound you would get of the flat boards rotating, which I like as a passenger, just knowing, hey, something's changing, look up. So quickly, you can see the, the animation and that little bit of the clickety clack that comes with uh, the board in use. Going back upstairs, we have a HHB 654 during the golden hour, leading a westbound northeast regional, coming into, I think, track four here, or track three. Um, this is from track one, looking west, we have a set of arrow threes coming in. And, you know, you can see a bit of the incline and decline um, that comes in the station area. 4800 here is an ex-Amtrak P40, New Jersey Transit, had them on their roster from 2007 to 2015. Um, initially, they were largely an ACES service. Um, after that, they remained on the Newark division for a number of years, seeing service on the Raritan Valley line and the Atlantic City line. Um, 2015, they were sold to the Connecticut Department of Transportation. Um, as I understand that they've been undergoing some major overhaul works and uh, have been coming out with new CT rail paint. So for those of you who are uh, up in Connecticut, keep an eye out. Because uh, uh, you know these units uh, hopefully will continue to chug on for many years. Here we have a uh, westbound Acela coming into the station on uh, track three. And the thing that stands out to me is uh, the Amtrak logo on here seems to be noticeably bigger than the rest of the fleet. You know, for me, it's 
going through photos, seeing as many trains as I do a lot of days, it's kind of fun to look out and spot the odd walls. Um, so that was something that certainly stood out to me with this photo. Um, we have one of the PL42 ACs with uh, likely a North Jersey coastline train coming in on track two. Um, many of these are going to be retired with the arrival of the new ALP 45 dual mode order coming in, although I think a few will continue uh, for the time being. This is a view on track three looking west. Uh, you can see uh, Newark Penn can be quite busy. We have uh, on track two on your left, uh, a little bit of the rear of a Northeast Regional. You have an Acela behind it waiting for track two to clear. And then on the right here, track three, you have uh, 941 Chevy Keystone en route to Philadelphia and Harrisburg. We have uh, AM7905 leading a long distance train and probably the Crescent though. Um, I don't recall for certain. Um, and of course you have, if you were to go today, you would see something like this, this scene coming from July of 2016. Um, ACS 64s replaced the AM7s and the HHP8s. Um, and uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see um, these new trains that Amtrak just ordered uh, operating within the span of a few years. After Newark Penn, we get to Newark Liberty International Airport. Newark Liberty opened in the fall of 2001 uh, at a cost of $400 million. Uh, Newark Liberty doesn't have car or foot access. It's accessible only by train or monorail. Um, in this case, air train being the monorail and Amtrak and New Jersey Transit being the carriers that stop on the main line. Um, in the coming years, the Port Authority is looking to replace the air train and to extend the path to Newark Liberty Airport. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that operation shifts. Um, the shots from I have from the airport stop all are from October 3rd, 2018. We have an East Madicella going through the Newark City Skyline visible in the background. Um, the waiting area for the station and the connection to the monorail is what you see above the tracks. We have uh, next the uh, westbound Crescent train 19, speed, uh, about to pass through the airport station after making its station stop in Newark. This is looking west. We have an eastbound Northeast Regional coming through the station. A westbound Keystone train led by an ex-Metroliner cab car. And uh, another look here at the Newark skyline. After the Newark airport stop, we get to North Elizabeth. North Elizabeth, for many years, was primarily a commuter station. Um, in recent years, with the growth of new residences in the area, um, you've seen a lot of weekend and off-peak hour service added as well. Um, the station, for many years, has low-level platforms. Uh, around 1987 is when they were upgraded to high-level platforms. The handful of shots I have for you from station all come from January 5th, 2020. Here we have a westbound Keystone uh, escaping from the shadow of Newark and uh, into the light of Elizabeth. Um, I don't know if you can see my mouse here, but this one building in the background you see is Newark Center. That's the building where those law school shots uh, came from. You have other parts of the Newark skyline still visible. Um, this being just west of Wayne Interlo Lane Interlocking and uh, the Newark Airport Station. So we have here a few rail fans, cameras in hand or tripods as they may be, set up for a shot. So what's the big deal? Is it this eastbound Acela? No, this. ACS 64, number 606, nicknamed by rail fans as the polar bear, was wrapped for a time in late 2019 and early 2020, um, promoting the switch from Co Pepsi to Coca-Cola on Amtrak trains. So you had, and you'll see in other shots I have of this later down the line, um, one of the Coca-Cola polar bear mascots briefing the sides of it. Going past North Elizabeth, we get to Elizabeth Station. Um, Elizabeth is also known as Broad Street Elizabeth. Uh, at ground level, there's a former Central Railroad of New Jersey stop. Um, the CNJ stop was in service until 1978. Um, it, it was also the site of interrailment one time, as I understand it, I think an overheight freight car couldn't clear um, 
basically the bridge that carries the northeast corridor. So you had uh, the train on the CNJ line derailing and crashed through the CNJ station. Um, for many years, I think dating from about 1903 or so, for the Pennsylvania Railroad, the main station building was on the westbound side of the tracks, the left of this image. Um, and you had, um, I think, an ancillary building on the right. Um, in May of 1971, uh, the main station building caught fire. And um, with that, uh, a replacement came in February 1973, the building you see here. The station's currently under construction. Um, if you look in the distance, you'll see uh, newer platform sections under construction. They're lengthening the old platforms at Elizabeth. Once the new phase of the platforms is complete, you'll see the old ones knocked out, the old station building knocked out, and uh, new modern facilities built. Uh, this shot shows an eastbound train at the station on March 30th of 2021. We have another one of New Jersey Transit's heritage units on the iconic Elizabeth S curve. Um, you know, it's always great when you can see a heritage unit on the former railroads line. So great sense of a what if, if the Pensy were running things today, what it might look like. This shot is from August 12th of 2020. Um, ignoring the data on the bottom, this shot is also an August 12th, 2020 shot. You can see we have a couple of westbound trains racing one another as an eastbound train makes a station stop. Um, I know the train on the center track would have been on North Jersey Coast Line train. I think the one on the left was a uh, Northeast Corridor local. Um, the parking garage at Elizabeth offers certainly a great vantage point um, for both the station and the S curve. This is another August 12th. 2020 shot, the uh, Nacella heading east through the curve uh, in route to its next stop in Newark. Uh, moving ahead to March 30th, 2021, this uh, we have a Nacella proceeding west on track three. Um, also gives you a little bit more of a close up of the new platform sections under construction. Um, and unfortunately, some of the graffiti that's accumulated on the construction barriers. Uh, one more shot from uh, March 30th of this year. And again, you know, giving you some perspective, you still have a nice view of some of the iconic Newark skyline buildings, including the Prudential building. As a westbound train comes through on track three express and you have a partial view of a local coming in on track four. After Elizabeth, our next stop is Linden. Uh, the shots you're gonna see all come from uh, just the last few days, July 1st. Linden um, dates, the station building here dates from about 1914. Um, you saw the right of way in this area elevated and expanded to six tracks, I believe around 1914 to 1916. The station received high level platforms in 1986 to 1987. So here's a, another street view of uh, the Linden station building. Um, you know, the platforms themselves are elevated, of course. Um, so we go here now upstairs. This is on um, the westbound platform. We're looking east. We have a, an Acela headed west to approaching the station. We have um, a silver meteor coming uh, west approaching the station. Uh, once again, escaping the shadows and uh, finding some sun uh, en route to Florida. Um, one thing to note is how the train is comparatively short to what you would normally see because of the pandemic. Um, typically, the Florida trains, you might see four or five coaches, perhaps even six in an extremely busy time. Here, there are only two um, on the meteor on this particular date. Um, you also have, for what it's worth, two of the new Viewliner 2 sleeping cars um, in service, as well as a Viewliner 2 diner and baggage car. This is a uh, Another shot from the westbound platform looking east, we have um, an Acela headed east towards Newark and New York. And uh, just gives you some perspective on the station area uh, and you know how expansive it really is. This is um, from the eastbound side of the station. We have a North Jersey coastline local uh, approaching. This, uh, gives you a view towards 
the west, uh, you have the Merck plant in the distance, you have Stiles Street Yard in the distance, you have an Arrow 3 set um, coming in uh, in route to New York. Um, Merck, where you see Merck um, approximates where you at one point until 1993 had uh, a North Railway station between Linden and Railway that closed, as I understand it, because low patronage made it difficult to um, justify the cost of putting in high plat level platforms as um, New Jersey Transit was looking to do around that time. Moving a little further west, we approach the Stiles Street Yard and you can see um, Norfolk Southern had a uh, first responder training train touring the country. So here in May of 2017, um, you see it sitting at the Stiles Street Yard in Linden um, as viewed from a New Jersey transit train passing through the area. And here's a look at the rear of the train. Continuing west, we hit Rawway, the last common station between the Northeast Corridor Line and the North Jersey Coastline. Um, this is a shot from the westbound platform. You're looking east. Uh, you see the current station building um, on the eastbound side of the station. Um, you know, the station site at Rawway dates to the 1830s. Um, Pennsylvania Railroad built a new station there in 1892. Um, a uh, track elevation project began, a uh, grade separation project began in December 1911. Um, with that, Railway got a new terracotta station um, that opened uh, on June 26, 1913. The remainder of the grade separation project was uh, completed in May 1914. And with that, 12 grade crossings were eliminated in the city limits. Um, the 1913 station was replaced by a simple brick station in 1974. Uh, railway was uh, between 1971 and 1975 an Amtrak station. Um, after the opening of Metro Park, Amtrak consolidated um, its stations along the line and Metro Park became the hub for this area. The uh, existing station I, I would also mention uh, was built in 1999. This is a, a view from the westbound platform looking east. You can see we have um, Oh, an eastbound uh, multi-level set shoved by an Alp 46, uh, passing with uh, the iconic Merck smokestacks visible in the background. And um, in the distance, we have a westbound New Jersey transit train um, hitting the curve east of the station. Uh, now they look again, we're facing west, or rather we're facing east, looking at two westbound trains. We have a, uh, uh, westbound North Jersey Coastline Express on one of the express tracks on your right, and we have a local coming in on the left. These um, shots are from March 19th of 2019. Um, as is this one, we have Alp 46, class leader 4600. Um, again, one of those great little oddballs. Uh, when you look at the sides of most of the Alp, New Jersey Transit's Alp 46s and 45s, the order of the stripes are actually reversed. They're typically blue to the left and orange to the right, but um, 4600 as uh, the prototype has this little bit of an oddity. Um, so we see it here rolling through um, on an express through the station uh, during the golden hour again, uh, March 19th, 2019. Moving ahead to July 3rd, 2019, we have Amtrak's only named electric locomotive number 600, ACS 64, uh, named for David Gunn, who was president of Amtrak from 2002 to 2005. Um, very instrumental in helping to get the railroad to a state of good repair. I think certainly popular among a lot of railroaders. Um, you know, he had a very long career in the railroad and transit industry, having stints with the New York City Transit Authority and SEPTA, um, but he certainly left enough of an impression on Amtrak that in 2014, they um, named 600 for him in, in honor of his uh, service to the railroad. After railway, the coastlines diverge. We hit Metro Park, one of the busiest stations on the line, a uh, massive parking garage facility just off the Garden State Parkway. This is a view from the parking garage on August 25th, 2016. You have the station building at ground level. A bridge connects the parking garage to track one. Um, it sees a lot of Amtrak service as well. 
Um, there are crossovers between the express and local tracks um, at uh, Islam and Menlo interlockings on either side of the station. So with that, you'll see everything from Keystones and Regionals to the Acela Express uh, stop there. Only really it's the long distance trains um, bypass it as well as some trains during peak hours just because of the volume of commutation you have going through. Uh, Metro Park Station opened in November 1971. It replaced um, Islin and Colonia stations um, as commuter stops in the area. Um, Amtrak, as I mentioned earlier, formerly served stations including Railway and Elizabeth, but eventually uh, this became the uh, main station west of Newark Penn and, and later Newark Airport. Moving upstairs, uh, this is track four. We have uh, our old friend P40-4800 leading an ACES train through the station on May 29, 2011. June 11, 2012, we have the highest numbered AEM7 on the roster, number 953, uh, leading a Keystone train, uh, a westbound Keystone train through the station on track four. This, of course, is the only way you want to see a car on the tracks. We have a high rail vehicle passing through on track two on October 19, 2013. This is uh, the sort of shot you dream about, the uh, four-way meet. Um, the only way it could have been better is if I had the other end of the arrow three set on track two in the shots, but I'll certainly take what I could get. So we have Acela's on track one and track three headed westbound from on three, eastbound on one. We have an arrow three set on track two, I think waiting for the Acela to clear and cross over to track one. And then we have another arrow three set uh, over on track four. And we're um, looking west in the shot. Uh, this next shot I call Acela of Madness, although credit for the name actually goes to Matt Donnelly. For those of you who know Amtrak, you know who Matt is. And uh, Matt was the one who uh, came up with the name after seeing this shot. So just a great view of the curve um, immediately east of the station, a great timely meet between two Acela sets. Um, certainly a view that won't be lasting too much longer with new Acela sets coming online, hopefully next year. Um, although they are testing now. An appropriate reddish color in the sky on November 3rd, 2017, as the Chicago bound Cardinal train 51 uh, approaches the station. Um, for many years, I commuted out of Metro Park to Trenton. Um, I will say it's a station that, you know, it's a spot where I really learned to appreciate the impact, the changing positions of the sun, different times of year and different cloud covers could have. Um, you know, this is a shot that, you know, in winter you're getting at about 7 a.m. Um, something you'd have to get up at, you know, a much earlier hour this time of year if you can even get it. So, um, you know, sometimes just shooting the same thing, you learn to appreciate the differences, albeit subtle sometimes, uh, that uh, the changing light throughout the year can have on a location. This is a, a great before and after shot. The two keystones here meeting just west of the station, uh, shot from track four. The keystone on the left headed east uh, with cab car 9636, an extra liner car, shows you what um, the cab cars looked like before the most recent conversion. Well, on the right, 9650 on track three, shows you the after. Um, the engineer's side of the cab, you had uh, a door before the overhaul that was plated over with the overhaul. You had the diaphragm uh, plated over in the front to, help to cut down, I think, some of the graphs the engineers would get, and I would imagine probably helping to strengthen um, that end in the event of a collision. Um, so this, uh, coming in January of 2018. By this point, I think 9636 was the only unconverted car left. Um, and I think within a few months, it would uh, begin to undergo that conversion to match the rest of the fleet. Now I have a cold six pack for you. Uh, this is train 3817. 
uh, arriving in station January 5th uh, en route to Trenton. Um, six cars is about as short of a set as you'll see uh, New Jersey Transit run on the Northeast Corridor, though occasionally you might see a five car set. Um, so here we have a, a pretty sky and uh, some snow being kicked up in the air to add to the action. This was a shot um, from a few days later, January 11, 2018. Um, just sort of gives you a great perspective on how things can change very quickly. This was sort of an everyday scene. You know, you have commuters crowding the track one platform elbow to elbow, waiting to get on a train for New York. You have the express going by and, you know, time just right to get the full train on the curve. Um, it's one of those things, obviously, we haven't been seeing with the pandemic and um, you know, we hope we'll be at a time soon enough where, you know, it will be safe and that the ridership uh, will return. Moving ahead, uh, we go to August 14th, 2020. We have a westbound Keystone. Um, noteworthy in that it's bookended by ACS 64s. Uh, evidently, a cab car wasn't available for this. Um, one trade off you had with that is cab cars are normally. Um, how Keystone trains get their Wi-Fi signal. That's where the antennas are located. So if you look closely, you can see behind the lead locomotive uh, an Amfleet food service car for a train that has no food service. And that's strictly um, to give the train a Wi-Fi signal. We have, I mentioned the Acela 2s before, we have uh, the Avelia Liberty or Acela 2 set uh, coming through on a westbound uh, test run on October 2nd, 2020. Um, a lot of the testing has been taking place between Philadelphia and um, New Brunswick with some uh, more recently coming in the New England area in particular. So here we have the uh, test set coming through, um, you know, headed west. And then uh, May 14th, we have uh, the overnight train, train 66 formerly the Night Owl, formerly the Twilight Shoreliner in Federal, um, here at Metro Park and route to Boston. Um, in this instance, it was uh, hauling one of the 50th anniversary units, number 100, uh, P42 diesel. I think it came off at New Haven that night, if I recall. Um, so, you know, one thing to certainly keep an eye out for, especially if you're traveling to diesel territory, are the 50th anniversary Amtrak units as they uh, come online this year. We move now to Metuchen Station. Um, here's a view of the station with the uh, pre-pandemic crowd uh, coming May 22nd, 2019, waiting for a New York bound train that's pulling into the station. Um, as I mentioned, the railroad has been present in Metuchen dating back to the 1830s. The earliest station site was uh, located at Main Street. Um, however, when the Eastern and Amboy Railroad uh, affiliated with the Lehigh Valley Railroad came to Metuchen in 1875, the Pennsylvania Railroad moved its passenger services to that junction uh, near Lake Avenue here in Metuchen. And, um, you know, it served as a connecting point. Um, at the time, I, as I understand it, the line ran at grade um, in 1888. Pennsylvania Railroad elevated the line. With that, they moved their passenger station back to uh, Main Street, where it is today. The station building you see dates to 1888 and um, was uh, rededicated, refurbished, I believe, in the 1970s. Um, this was also the site of a derailment in, on June 22nd, 1977. We had uh, an axle overheat on a freight car. Uh, a big derailment that sent at least one car down to Main Street below. Uh, at the east end of the station, there's one catenary pole uh, at uh, track one that has um, concrete going up much higher than all the others. As I understand it, this is uh, the repair resulting from that derailment. Uh, this is a look at the interior of the station from 2019. Um, you can see we have the plaque from when the station was rededicated in 1979, along with the small library. Um, the station's currently closed to the public. We hope it'll reopen soon. Back outside, we have looking east, uh, an eastbound New Jersey Transit local meeting westbound Keystone during the golden hour. This shot coming on March 4th, 2019. 
sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. We have a, a westbound Trenton Express um, with an electrical arc uh, illuminating part of the catenary structure here. This on June 18th of 2019. A few minutes after the shot, we had uh, some torrential rain. So you can see this arrow three set really getting bathed um, you know, on, on June 18th of 2019. From track one, looking east on track three, we have the westbound Pennsylvania train 43 and another arc at roughly the same place. Um, behind it, it's private car Lamperts Point built by the Pullman Company in 1918. Um, it was Norfolk and Western business car for a number of years before being sold into private ownership. Um, here we see it en route to um, either Philly or Pittsburgh being in Pennsylvania. <clears throat> October is a great time of year to get some photographs of westbounds um, at Metuchen Station late in the day. And here on October 25th, we have a very timely meeting of two Acela sets during the golden hour um, at Lincoln Interlocking, just west of the station. This is from track four looking west. Um, there is a Conrail share, shared asset yard in Metuchen just off the corridor. Um, so when local freights, usually the ME2 moves, enter, they reverse from the west end of inter Lincoln Interlocking. They move east through the station um, to switch over to track three or track four. Conrail Caboose 22137, you see here, is used as a shoving platform to help with these moves. Um, it was originally Reading Caboose 94102, built by the International Car Company in 1970. Um, great thing about the shot, I didn't even realize it at the time I got it, but I got a kick when I looked back later and noticed if you look on the right side of the freight car here, you have a little pirate flag attached. So definitely one of those cool things that can be easy to miss in the moment sometimes. Um, another look at Lincoln, we have uh, November 5th, 2019, during the golden hour, uh, Pennsylvania Railroad Heritage Unit 4636, another one of those great uh, almost time machine-like shots or alternate reality shots. And uh, again, 4636, this time in December, 2019, December 2nd, during a snowstorm, um, headed west after um, coming through on track four and uh, a little bit of Lincoln Tower visible in the background. Um, many of the trains you'll see during daylight are the ME2 locals that will go through about midday and head to customers um, in the New Brunswick area or as far south, I think, as Deans. Um, but you also have longer freight trains. Typically, they run overnight um, to yards like Oak Island. Here we had um, the longer trains typically come through at night. So this was a rare daylight opportunity to get it. That's why you can see there are so many rail fans lined up here. Um, this uh, was December 21st, 2019. Um, and you can see a you know, great little bit of color in the sky. And uh, you know, the, the train has entered the corridor. If you look in the distance, you can see it comes off the branch. Part of it is on track one, while the, while the lead part of it is, um, the, the front end of it is on track two. Um, and I, you know, I would add one other thing I've learned to appreciate with photography over the years. I know a lot of people like to avoid getting people in shots, but sometimes they really can add something to the scene. And I, you know, just this, mass gathering of rail fans my, like myself posted for hours to see this one move. Um, certainly a, a cool story. Now, this was the closest I got to getting the polar bear in snow. You know, we unfortunately didn't have much of it while the unit was still wrapped. Sadly, it didn't come through on December 2nd with that 4636 shot I showed you. But you know, here there is at least some snow to give you some of the ambiance. Um, I know people down in Maryland and possibly even Pennsylvania, I uh, did luck out with a little bit of snow for one of the runs, but, um, you know, cool to get what you could. Um, we have uh, Erie Lackawanna Heritage Out 45, number 4519, um, on a positive train control test train on March 18th, 2020. Uh, it's leading the train east to this, from uh, on track one, originating in Morrisville, it's entering to the Meadows Maintenance Complex where it would turn and return west. So you'll see the next couple of shots are of the train on its return. We have one of New Jersey Transit's veteran out 46 units um, on the west end, leading it uh, west after 
you know, on the return trip here. And uh, another shot of the 4519, we're looking west. Um, you can see part of the station building in, in present as well. With the pandemic hitting, um, things understandably changed dramatically. And, you know, pre-pandemic, the shortest train you'd see on the Northeast corridor would be, you know, maybe a four car keystone. This is the Carolinian train 79, a train that would normally be much longer with a mix of Amfleet ones and twos and a baggage car cut down to three cars, two coaches and a food service car. Um, we have a family of rail fans lined up to catch and photograph it in action um, under a nicely colored sky. So a little bit of beauty during a very, um, very difficult time. So we have uh, one of the ME tombs here. Um, a lot of rail fans gathered. Is it for that? Um, this shot coming, by the way, on May 7, 2020. No. Although, you know, certainly the exhaust makes for a nice touch in the scene. They're here for this. This was a test train that had one of the new Siemens Venture coaches um, in tow. Uh, the train also had ACS 64s on both ends with uh, veteran unit 642 bringing up the rear. Here's a close up of the uh, Venture coach. In this case, this was one of the cars that would uh, be destined for San Joaquin service. Um, you have also these cars coming to the Midwest, um, including Illinois, uh, Wisconsin, and a lot of the Chicago based trains. Um, it'll be interesting to see with the new <clears throat> train sets. One would think this could serve as a, sort of the starting point for the passenger cars, but I guess time will tell as Amtrak releases uh, more information about the design. Moving ahead to August 12th, 2020, we have a, a rainstorm. Um, we have a Crescent train number 19 with a double header, including 642 again, um, meeting in East Bend, New Jersey Transit Local. Now, with the Avelio Liberty test run coming through here, September 28th of 2020, I couldn't resist uh, the chance to showcase the past and present and future in one shot. So very cool to see the 1888 station building up against a 2020, 2021, 2022 built high-speed train set. Uh, a little bit later, we have on November of 2020, uh, we have the uh, Veterans ACS 64, 642. Uh, you know, occasionally with bad weather days or places I've been to a lot, I'll mess around with the zoom pan shot. So that's what you have here um, as it leads an eastbound regional to the station on track two. A uh, little bit of rain flying from the pantograph. In December 2020, December 16th, 17th, we had a pretty heavy snowstorm. So you had this unusual sighting here. You had um, pans down on the ACS 64 of a regional with uh, P42 providing the power. Um, I, I guess there were some sections of the catenary that were out. Um, I know at least in some cases, the ACS is they, the sprinters, as they're called, were put on the front because not all of the P42s have the positive train control system used on the Northeast Corridor, known as Axis or ACES, uh, the Advanced Civil Enforcement System, I believe is what the acronym stands for. So regardless, you have the interesting sighting of an electric locomotive pans down and diesel power coming through um, as this westbound regional kicks up a little snow on track four approaching the station. Uh, another pan shot of a westbound regional, uh, in this case, probably one of my better efforts uh, coming through on track four. Data this shot is December 20th of 2020. <clears throat> with this winter, with the snowstorm, knowing that the Acela's days weren't long, I was really glad I could get this shot. Eastbound Acela coming through Lincoln, kicking up some snow during the golden hour. You know, it's one of those things, I know the Acela's are the everyday thing, now, but definitely get your photos in because there's a time where even if you don't think you're going to miss them quite now, or even if you're very excited about the new sets, don't forget to take in the old because they certainly have a proud legacy. 
Uh, we have a shot of Heritage Unit 4636 at the, near sunset, uh, February 17th, with an eastbound set on track one. Uh, March 13th of this year, I happened to go to the station for a little while to do some rail fanning, and uh, I came upon this. We have uh, volunteers from the Seeing Eye training Seeing Eye dogs. Now, typically, they would actually get on the trains with these dogs to get them familiar with settings that um, the vision impaired people they serve might find themselves in. With the pandemic, they weren't doing that, but they were here at the station to acclimate them with the noises and the sights. Um, so just a very cool, out of the ordinary thing. So something for uh, not only you rail fans, but you dog lovers there. Um, certainly something that made my girlfriend happy as a dog lover herself. This shot uh, that I didn't mention uh, was March 13th of this year. Next, we're gonna move just west of the station. This is from the Bridge Street overpass in the Tutchin. Um, we have the Avelia of Liberty set on April 5th of 2021 <clears throat> and reach in New England where it would do some testing basically, as I recall, I think simulating some of the schedules um, in the New England area running um, on the stretch of the line that's capable of handling 165 mile per hour trains. Uh, the set incidentally came rolling through early this morning. It had been in New England uh, for a little while and I think was brought back to Philly very early this morning. <clears throat> we move now to Edison Station. Um, Edison Station was formerly known as Stelton. North of Edison, there was a large yard that served Camp Kilmer. Um, here we have a Norfolk Southern GP38-2 passing through on June 20th, 2017 on a light move. Um, it's headed east here. My guess would be back to the touching yard after running on a local. Under some ominous looking skies, we have a West Bandicella coming through on track three. And I, this is a shot I just love the lighting on. Uh, you know, you can tell the storm is about to hit. We have uh, Mark, Maryland's commuter agency. Um, the day after Thanksgiving is Amtrak's busiest travel day of the year generally. So for many years, they've borrowed commuter equipment uh, including from New Jersey Transit and Mark. In this case, in 2016, they borrowed two sets um, using the Mark HHB8 with Mark coaches and one food service car sandwiched in there for um, you know, bathrooms and food service, I believe. So here we have um, one of the holiday extras coming through and route to Washington uh, as viewed from track four. We have here Veterans Unit 642 viewed from track four as it heads on track three uh, west on May 3rd, 2017. We have a, an ME2 move with Norfolk Southern Power leading uh, as a westbound set of arrow threes makes a station stop on track four. And uh, in the distance, we have an eastbound train um, about to arrive at the station. Uh, from here, you're looking towards Highland Park in New Brunswick. With this shot, this wasn't uh, due to any sort of weather issue. Uh, for a time during the pandemic, the overnight regional 65, 66, 67 wasn't running. Typically those are the runs where you'll see Amtrak when they have to move diesels between Boston or New Haven and Washington, they would normally tack them on the overnight train. Since those weren't running uh, for a time in 2020, you could go and occasionally see uh, a move like this one on August 12th of uh, P42 being transported to Washington on this westbound Northeast Regional. Till August 12th of 2020, we have a shop move. We have um, an equipment move uh, from the Meadows Maintenance Complex headed to Morrisville. Uh, you know, it's a cool site. You have uh, two train sets together. Plus, on the very rear, you'll see the, the second one of the Jeeps going away shot of it. We move ahead to May 21st of this year. Uh, another, or May 15th, actually. This is another shot of a shop move or, or an equipment move. Nice representation of a lot of New Jersey Transit's equipment from uh, the Alp 46 and GP42 leading 
to the comments and at the very end uh, and multi levels and arrow threes bringing up the rear. Um, another thing, it's one of those things <clears throat> as uh, the song goes, you don't, don't always seem to go, you don't know what you got till it's gone. This view has changed in a little bit since this time. Amtrak has put up new security fencing. So <clears throat> a shot like this will certainly be more difficult, if not impossible, to get because of that change. Um, this is a view from the parking lot on the New York bound side of the station for reference. <clears throat> Here we have uh, an eastbound Acela uh, coming through on track two. Now, the main reason I was at Edison on this date, track one was out of service due to work. So you had trains using low level boarding via track two. Um, low level boarding can only be accomplished for about a car length or two at Edison. So normally you wouldn't see a crew member um, with the door open when the train's in motion, but for this, uh, for spotting purposes, they're able to do it here. So we have two shots of that maneuver in action here. We move now to New Brunswick. Um, New Brunswick um, has been connected by rail since 1838. The present station uh, dates to 1903. A uh, similar station existed in Haver de Grace, Maryland. Uh, the shot you're looking at is viewed from the parking garage. The station is uh, adjacent to track one. Here we have an East Maticilla meeting one of the ME2 moves as uh, just after a westbound express train passed through. Uh, same ME2 move uh, as a westbound train comes through with uh, an arrow three set on track four. Now, one thing that um, I like about the shot besides just the meeting of passenger and freight is 1442 and 1443 are a married pair of arrow threes. And one of those oddities where pretty much all the other arrow threes would have New Jersey transit markings on the front end for whatever reason, this pair doesn't. The preceding two shots were from March 21st, 2017, by the way. So Friday the 13th, living up to uh, its reputation, uh, Keystone set ran into trouble on April 13th, 2018. So we had an Amtrak Jeep rescuing it, telling it uh, likely to Philly for uh, inspection and repair. Uh, shot here from October 22nd, 2018, we have um, two eastbound trains meeting us, so the, and uh, a New Jersey Transit local under a very colorful evening sky. This shot uh, will probably look familiar to some of you, maybe even got some of you to show up. We have a three-way meet uh, on the Raritan River Bridge, uh, New Jersey Railroad and well represented between the Acela Express set, the AS64 yes, and the Arrow 3. And uh, our final shot from New Brunswick Station is uh, a view from the parking garage. We have a uh, New Jersey Transit set deadheading from Jersey Avenue to Metro Park. Um, about to leave the bright and sunny spot in New Brunswick and cross into shadowy Highland Park. After New Brunswick, we get to Jersey Avenue. Um, Jersey Avenue opened in 1963 as a mass transit demonstration process, project to show the viability of park and ride facilities. Um, West, all westbound service um, has to originate from the station. The main line only has a platform on track four. The other track with a platform is on the former Millstone branch. Um, here we have one of the ME2 locals coming off, heading on to uh, either the Millstone branch or the Delco lead. Uh, we have a New Jersey Transit local pulling into the station um, for its last stop. Again, one of the oddballs, uh, in this case, uh, normally the New Jersey Transit logo and the stripe would be in opposite places, but 7001 uh, stands out as being flip-flop. We have uh, the preceding shots were April 13th of 2018. 
uh, the next move from April 10th, 2019, you can see uh, the ME2 move coming through the Millstone track um, and uh, getting ready to drop off some cars to some customers. Uh, this is viewed from the daily lot just across Jersey Avenue. Uh, by this point, the locomotive has uh, run around the end of the train. It's about to couple up to the caboose and um, uh, basically continue shifting cars uh, at the station or, or uh, for the customers rather. And then once the work was all said and done, you have the locomotive and the caboose um, backing off and onto the main. I don't know if from here it proceeded back to the touching yard or it went to other customers uh, in South Brunswick, but um, gives you a little bit more of a complete sense of the train, um, as well as a shot of County Yard where um, a number of the local trains, anything terminating in Jersey Avenue, uh, will lay over. After Jersey Avenue, um, the next places that formerly had stations but do not currently were Adams, Dean's, Monmouth Junction, and Plainsboro. Um, Adams is home to an Amtrak maintenance facility. Uh, it was known as Franklin Park till January 1913. Uh, Adams is located in North Brunswick, Dean's in South Brunswick. Dean's had a station building until it burned down December 2nd, 1944. In later years, it was served by a shelter. <clears throat> Adams and Dean's were discontinued on December 3rd, 1967. Monmouth Junction lasted into 10 central years until uh, October 26th, 1972. Plainsboro had service until May 29, 1962. So this shot we have is the maintenance facility at Adams. The staircases are still in place that led to the former station platforms, although they're fenced off. Now, <clears throat> there will be a new station in North Brunswick in the coming years around this area. Ground has been broken for a new North Brunswick station. You may also see at some point uh, a midline loop installed to give the give trains the ability to turn um, in a great separated manner. Here we have um, one of the Aurora Turboliner 3s. That's um, the Aurora Turboliners were purchased in the 1970s, um, saw a lot of years on the Empire Corridor. Um, New York and Amtrak were working on a project to refurbish uh, the sets, but uh, because of disputes, the cars were pulled from service after, uh, the train sets were pulled from service after uh, very limited use. <clears throat> Here we have uh, Power Car 2162, uh, stored currently in Adams Yard. This shot uh, gives you a before, earlier on when these trains first came down. <clears throat> this first shot is from April 10th, 2019. If we shift to uh, more recent time, <coughs> excuse me, uh, June 28th, 21. You can see the car is deteriorated a little more. Some of the wrap uh, by the door is peeling off. Uh, also had a stenciled number applied. Um, here we see a staircase, uh, one of the markings left uh, of where Dean Station was in South Brunswick. This shot uh, is from a few years ago. Uh, this is the former site of Monmouth Junction. There was a shelter that stood for many years before it was demolished. This shot came from uh, 2012, June of 2012. Um, that concrete base is no longer there because I think they had uh, taken it out in conjunction with some other work um, at the site. But until I think somewhere between 2009, 2012, there was actually a shelter. The old shelter is still there, even though the station had been out of service for many years. So. Past these spots, we get to Princeton Junction. Um, Princeton Junction came into being after the Camden and Amboy line was realigned in the 1850s and 1860s. Um, Princeton, unhappy that they were severed from the network, uh, lobbied to get train service back. So the Princeton branch was put into being. Princeton Junction is in West Windsor um, in Mercer County. Um, here, this is another one of those views from the rear of the regional in August of 2017. So you have the inactive Nassau Tower. You have the arrow set on the Princeton branch on the far right. Um, and you have a westbound set uh, making a station stop on track four. 
there was there was until I believe the 1980s an interlocking here at Nassau. Right now, the only track connection that exists is between track four and the Princeton branch track to get um, train sets on and off the Princeton branch. Here's a view of the 1980s station building um, that came in when the high level platforms were put in during that era. This shot here shows you some of the Amtrak maintenance away personnel working with the ballast tamper on January 29, 2017 as a westbound regional passes through uh, the New Brunswick to Trenton stretch of the corridor. Um, has been seeing upgrades to the catenary and uh, right of way as part of the New Jersey High Speed Rail Improvement Project intended to allow the new Acela sets to go um, up to 165 miles per hour. Uh, from that same day, we have um, uh, an Amtrak worker present holding up the sign to remind the New Jersey transit train approaching here to sound its horn. You'll also see the uh, dinky on the far left here in the pen, the Princeton branch was out of service on this date. Uh, this fencing, this the pen as it's called, exists because there was a time where um, evidently a gentleman uh, with, after a few too many, I think climbed atop it and got electrocuted. So, you know, since then uh, the uh, dinky when not in use and including overnight gets, um, tucked away here. And you can see some Amtrak maintenance away equipment uh, sitting on track four. Trains would have been low leveling on the state um, running on track three. Um, here we have a, a West Bend, New Jersey transit train. Uh, we're looking east here. Uh, we have a reflection of the train in one of the station signs. Uh, here from uh, as someone who works in Trenton, occasionally if I see something interesting, I'm tempted to hop off the train if I can, or to try and get there at a convenient time before or after work. Uh, in this case, in um, May of, I'm uh, sorry, August of 2017, uh, I noticed uh, on August 3rd, the catenary maintenance vehicle sitting there uh, at the east end of the station. So I figured, okay, I'll get up early the next morning, take an earlier train, see if I can get some good shots of it, good light. So, you know, accomplish that here. Uh, unfortunately, I got a little more than I bargained for because the train I was waiting to catch apparently snagged the wires. Um, so with that, track three had been out of service because of the um, improvement project. Um, here you see uh, a GP40-2. Um, it's actually running eastbound on track four, the westbound local track to go rescue the train that had down wires. Um, so I was stuck at the station for a little while, trains were bypassing. Finally, uh, an Amtrak train stopped, uh, creating the unusual situation of low level boarding for a westbound train on track two. So I finally did manage to get to work, albeit uh, after using some unforeseen lead time in the process. Here, August 16th, 2017, we have a little bit of fog and the pre pandemic crowd, Princeton Junction um, being a very busy station uh, with lots um, notorious for years long wait lists, at least during normal times. We have um, on August 16, 2017, we have a, a West Mendocella passing um, some Amtrak equipment being used for installing constant tension catenary. Uh, remember this equipment here on the right because uh, you'll see some interesting stuff when we get to Hamilton in a few minutes. Uh, some more work going on. Uh, crews working on the catenary in October 2017. Here we have uh, an X Metro Liner uh, EMU built by Bud. Uh, 9800 it was a snack bar coach originally converted by Amtrak in the 1990s as a conference car available for charter. So in this case, the train seen heading to New York from Philadelphia, carrying the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, and uh, I guess to that I say, go Devils. From track one, we're looking east uh, towards Nassau Tower and we have an arcing Acela uh, during the golden hour. So nice mix of light and uh, electricity. 
here, May 7th, 2019. Definitely one of those, something you don't see every day. In this case, I, I noticed this train parked here as I'm on a train headed home. So I figured, okay, I'll step off, check it out, maybe get a few photos. So here, what this crew is doing is actually taking the old wire um, off of the catenary infrastructure for track two. So another shot of this in action, you can see they're reeling it on here and you have uh, some newer copper wire as well. So a couple of shots of this in action. Uh, we see uh, from the same date, uh, our old friend, uh, ACS 64, number 600, with David L. Gunn, leading a westbound Northeast Regional. We have, uh, again, the same date, uh, another Northeast Regional, this time with a pair of ACS 64s providing the power. Uh, uh, I'm shooting from track four, so you see the uh, a little bit of the station building on the opposite side here as well. Another one of those days where I saw something odd uh, uh, as I'm on the train heading home, so I jumped off. Here, this catenary maintenance vehicle had broken down. So sometimes in life, you got to compromise. And uh, here, the compromise uh, involved is a compromised coupler. The catenary maintenance vehicle doesn't have a standard coupler. So you can see the crews working on a, uh, uh, putting a compromised coupler in so that they can tow it away, presumably to atoms. Um, and again, you have a worker present with a sign here to alert oncoming trains to blow their horns and alert the crew nearby. We move ahead to March 20th of this year, and we have another equipment move, a triple header, although um, only the lead unit is providing power. The other two, as you can see, are pans down, dead and tow. And I guess on the other end of it, uh, a little while later, ended up being a good morning for some rail fanning. We have uh, an Amtrak work diesel running light, again, presumably on the way to Adams. Look at it going away uh, as it proceeds east. Uh, so this day here in March, I thought it'd go because I knew they'd be doing some low leveling. Here you have an Amtrak engineer on one of the few weekend Northeast regionals that make a Princeton Junction station stop, uh, just checking with the passengers, making sure that they have Amtrak tickets and, you know, making sure they don't get New Jersey transit passengers boarding inadvertently. Now, you, they were in the middle of putting in these platform extensions track when it was being taken out of service for some work for an extended period. So um, until the extension was completed down the line of track one, you had low level boarding for this date. Here we have uh, the Silver Star headed west on the same day. Uh, this was during the time where you had only one silver service train per day during the pandemic. So whereas we had our silver meteor with two coaches in the consist, this we had six. So, you know, part of that was the fact you had only one train a day uh, between New York and Miami instead of two. Part of it also was because they were running at reduced capacity. So it allowed people to spread out. So moving briefly to the Princeton branch, we see the current station here. Uh, this wall is actually the back of a Wawa that's adjacent to the station. Uh, this station opened in 2014, um, replacing the one that's stood for many, many years. We have another odd wall, 1310. Uh, this is a single uh, three. It's not part of the very pair and like 1442, 1443. Um, it does not have the New Jersey Transit logo on the end. Before we get to the current Princeton Station, there is a grade crossing at Faculty Road. So we have this shot of a two-car train just after it's departed current Princeton Station. Uh, going back in time a little bit, we have the former Princeton Station. Here we have uh, the Denke, a uh, single car operating on the state um, at the old station on June 2nd, 2010. From November 13th, 2011, we have a little bit fuller of a view of the boarding area. This was not the actual station waiting area. This, as you can see, was just the boarding point for trains. The waiting room was actually this building here you see on the left. Now, Princeton University wanted to build a new arts center and a new parking garage. They had the right um, to force New Jersey Transit to move the station a distance. So they moved it back, I think about 1400 feet to 
present site uh, during the 2010s. And um, the station I showed you before is the current station in service. We have um, from November 13, 2011, this is another view from the platform of the dinky at the old station. Today, a restaurant is located at the site of the old station waiting room and appropriately enough, it is named the dinky as a tribute. So um, I have not been, I hope to check it out at some time, um, but it's good to at least see the uh, station building standing and looking healthy, at least for now. Now, if you go there today, you do have some historical markers basically resembling ties and they give you some different points in history um, for the Princeton branch, ranging from the start of service in 1865 to 2014 when the new station opens. Um, and also other events like the uh, Dinky robbery, uh, which is uh, something out of Princeton lore. Um, so here, another perspective on the markers. Uh, first marker here for 1865 when the branch opens and the last marker here for 2014 with the redevelopment of the shifting of the station. And finishing up here in Princeton, um, we have a look at the current station. The building you see is the current waiting room. The Wawa is behind it in this shot adjacent. And of course we have the, the dinky sitting at Princeton station between rooms. Going back to the main line of the corridor, we have Hamilton Station. Hamilton opened in 1999. For many years, the only stops in Mercer County were Princeton Junction and Trenton. Um, between the two, you had a Lawrence Station at one point. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when that ended service, um, but that was something that was, um, that I think there may be some structures that still exist there in some form. Um, this view here, of Hamilton Station uh, shows the station as it looked for many years, basically sort of its as-built form. Um, if you were to go there now, the uh, platform canopy supports have been painted brown. This is a view from the pedestrian overpass here. The, the prior view, by the way, was March 27, 2011. We have an East Bandicella. You can see um, catenary with a lot of the new um, infrastructure that's been put in with the improvement program. If you look though, you do see these uh, older structures towards the top that were used to support the wires uh, previously. Uh, you know, the, the new catenary is, as I understand it, constant tension so that it permits the higher speeds because if you don't have um, fixed tension catenary, it can sag in the heat it can bounce around and it can be the sort of thing that gets teared down by a train, as I mentioned earlier. So here, again, uh, September 23rd, 2017, East Bandicella on track two viewed from the pedestrian overpass at the station. Um, October 7th, 2017, we have a low level boarding operation, uh, passengers getting on a New York bound train, um, Hamilton and other big park and ride facilities. So, um, at least during normal times, it does attract a lot of ridership, even during off-peak times. Now, Hamilton is also where we get some interesting things going on. Here we have a work train in the station. It's coming from October 28th, 2017. But uh, it'll get more interesting in a minute. Uh, before that, though, um, April 23rd, 2018, this is from track four. This platform, you're looking east, and you have a set of trees that um, very beautiful in bloom, um, you know, can offer you some great fall colors. So definitely a spot, you know, in the spring and fall worth visiting in the afternoon if you have the time uh, to check out and grab a few photos. Now, interesting. So July 1st, 2019, I'm at work towards the end of the day. One of my coworkers let me lets me know, hey, there's a fire near Hamilton Station. So I knew, well, okay, if I go to the Trenton Transit Center, to, I'll just be waiting to get home for God knows how long. Now, if I go and get a bus, at least I can get out of here, have a change of scenery, maybe see if there's anything interesting going on. Now, as you can see, by the time I got there, there was still some intrigue. Um, 
the unit uh, here, one of the units being used to install constant tension catenary had caught fire. By this point, I think the fire was largely out, but I guess there were still some hot spots. So you have the fire department dousing it. I guess if ever you were to call me a foamer, now would, would be an appropriate time to do so. So again, July 1st, 2019, we have um, after the foam has been sprayed, some of it dripping off. By this, a few minutes later, the crew is able to take some of the things that had been on board off of it. You have uh, still even with uh, that bit of foam, it looked like you still had some heat coming off the unit for a little while longer, but um, it was apparently safe enough to still have the crew this close to it. So finally, the time came to get the thing out of there so they could reopen the line. So we have a sister unit uh, coming in about to couple up with it so it could haul it to the um, vicinity of Ham Tower where there are some siding tracks. So we have a uh, sister unit working on coupling up to get the damaged unit out. And now the line is finally reopened. So we have uh, an eastbound Acela running on track three as a westbound Northeast Regional comes through on track four. Here's a look at uh, some of the damage we have from the fire, uh, as well as uh, some of the foamy goodness that came with uh, the fire department's work. So you can see, uh, you know, some of the side panels got pretty charred or even came off completely. And uh, you can also see, you know, still some coolers and some things that uh, I guess either survived or were thrown on after the fire. A uh, better look at the damage. Uh, this looks like, uh, if you look closely, you can see what uh, looks like it would have been a window um, charred and melted and curled up here. Some of the paneling is gone and um, you have some of the residue of the foam douse in this constant tension unit. Uh, another going away shot, another look at the damage. And uh, now looking more towards the west, we have part of the station building in view as the uh, as the equipment makes its way out of the station area. So Amtrak F40s weren't something you'd really see on the Northeast Corridor in New Jersey uh, because of height restrictions, especially in the New York area, as well as um, limitations on running diesels through the North River pumps. Here though, you have um, this shot here coming from July 27, 2019, Amtrak had sold off a number of their old F-40s along with some other power, including the P-40s to private ownership. That's the LTEX mark you see. Um, so here they were parked um, near Ham Tower near Milham Junction. Um, so, you know, I decided to hop on at one point and try to get a shot while they were there since it was certainly something out of the everyday. And I personally, you know, wasn't really an active rail fan at the time where the F-40s were Amtrak's active power. So here you go. So we're at our last New Jersey station, the Trenton Transit Center. Um, station here dates to this, the station on this site dates to the 1860s. Um, Camden and Omboy had been here since 1837, but this site uh, became the station site in 1863. Um, Pennsylvania Railroad built a new building in 1897. Um, that structure was in place for many years, demolished in 1972, uh, replaced in 1976 with a more modern structure. Um, in 2006, New Jersey Transit upgraded the station uh, with the support of Amtrak. They expanded it, um, added a significant amount of retail space, um, and it was, the project was completed in 2009. Now on the left side of the image here, you have uh, a scene Pink Creek. Um, one hazard with it is that it occasionally floods. So you had SEPTA in 2011 left a push pull uh, set up on this uh, storage track uh, to the left behind the tree. Um, that was there, it got flooded. So um, obviously a lot of extensive repair work had to be done after that. Um, the train you see here, of course, we have a veterans engine ACS 64, 642. Um, it's leaving the Carolinian out of the station. Uh, 
this shot was uh, relatively recent, coming on May 24th, 2021. Here we have um, an HHV-8 leading a westbound northeast regional into the station. This was uh, Yes, June 2012. 2012 was the end of the line for SEPTA's Silver Liner 2s, um, inherited from the Pennsylvania Railroad and Reading Company, as well as ex Pennsylvania Railroad Silver Liner 3s. Here, uh, Silver Liner 235 um, is seen in its uh, Silver Liner 3 235 is seen as its final days, June 26, 2012, um, along with X Reading uh, Silver Liner 2 9010. Uh, this shot, as I mentioned, was June 26, 2012, as was the other. Um, the last run for these cars, the last in operation from their respective fleets, came on June 29th, 2012, on the Kenwood line in the Philadelphia area. I'm not sure if this was the last time they were in Trenton, but it was certainly one of the last times. So, kind of cool to catch that um, by chance. Moving ahead a few years, we get to a foggy November 2nd, 2017, um, and a Sela passing uh, a Silver Liner 5 set. Uh, these were the cars that, after they were acquired, led to the retirement of the Silver Liner 2s and 3s I mentioned before. So we have a fair amount of fog coming in between the weather and the creek, uh, adding some nice intrigue to the scene. Um, now, this sort of meat will factor in later to one of the other odd photos I show you. So again, stick around, you're gonna see something very off the wall shortly. Um, before we get to that, we get to something unusual, not quite off the wall. We have uh, a New Jersey Transit single level set bookended with an Alp 46 uh, at the West End and uh, Alp 45, 4534, the last in the original order, um, decorated also as a veteran's unit. Um, I don't remember if it was the case with this particular train, but this was something common to see around 2017, 2018, 2019, as New Jersey Transit was working on positive train control. Um, they started off, I think, in large part with the cab cars. Um, so for a while, you would see a lot of trains, particularly on the Northeast corridor, um, you'd see a handful of trains that either had a locomotive at one end and a trailer at the end. Uh, with no cab car on, or you had this sort of setup where you had uh, locomotives at both ends. So this, uh, if I'm, uh, again, if I didn't mention before, was November 8th, 2017, crossing under the South Clinton Avenue Bridge. Uh, this is a shot from track one, we're looking west. This one um, I call Take Me to the Pilot. You have uh, an Amtrak engineer inspecting the pilot of this locomotive. Um, it was positioned here in Trenton, November 24th, 2017. This was around the Thanksgiving holiday time. So Amtrak, um, for good measure, uh, parked this unit here as extra protect power in case anything went wrong, you know, would cut down the distance of the nearest rescue unit. Again, we're uh, Thanksgiving rush time, November 26, 2017. I showed you the 2016 edition of the uh, holiday extras. Here's one from 2017. You can see for 2017, Amtrak still borrowed the mark coaches, but they didn't bother to use a food service card this time around, and they also used their own power. Um, with the addition of the ACS 64s in their fleet, um, they had an abundance of power, so they were able to um, use their own instead of leasing it from a commuter carrier. Another shot from November 26th, 2017, I call this one Fade Away and Radiate. I, um, for those of you who are Blondie fans out there, you'll appreciate the reference, I hope. Um, so I figured I'd play around with my camera, try out the HDR mode. Here, just the idea just being to get a shot of the locomotive in the station um, with some of the buildings in the background. Well, as luck would have it, this uh, westbound train came in as that long exposure was going. So that's why you have the train fading out. Uh, you know, you have some of the light radiating off of it and you have the train basically fade out to, at, at, um, at the point where it was only briefly in frame. Here we have one of the SEPTA AEM7s 
um, in its, I think, roughly last year of service um, here on track three, uh, just in storage uh, with some snow blowing off the canopy to add to the ambiance late May afternoon. Uh, the shot from January 5th, 2018. Now we're gonna to get to one of those very unusual occurrences, a minor derailment at the station. July 20th, 2018, um, this happened midday. So during the lunch hour, I ventured out to see what had happened. So if you look on the right here, you have, um, you can see an odd angle of this multi-level coach and the Alp 46. It was a train terminating a track. So it's crossing over from track four to track five, uh, the Alp unit pushing, and it derailed going across the switch. So minor derailment, you know, I think probably the front truck of the Alp 46 uh, and the rear truck of the multi-level coach you see here are what came off the track. The rest of the set um, stayed on the rails. So they uncoupled it, moved it out. Um, you know, Amtrak brought in uh, one of their Jeeps to get the railed equipment out of the way. And you can see here the crew looking on after they had separated it. So this is a few hours later. This is um, early on in the afternoon rush. Uh, by this point, they had gotten the multi-level car uh, on the rails and backed up a little bit. Um, but this gives you a sense of um, the damage from the derailment. Uh, you know, you can see where the outer rail would be versus where the train is. So one of those things, uh, not an everyday occurrence, thing you may never, I may never see again, but i um, glad that this was at least something minor. And, um, you know, obviously they were able to clean it up and without too much disruption with the location. We have uh, another SEPTA AEM-7. Uh, thing that always gets me with this shot is the um, two different number boards. And the thing I love most about the shot, of course, is just happening to catch the arc. This is a Trenton bound train coming in um, at the end here, um, early on in the evening rush. We go to November 30th, 2018. We have an Amtrak crew working on digging out a trench and putting in these cables you see here. Um, of course, uh, no morning session would be complete without the box of Joe. If you look closely, you have uh, some of the crew members here with uh, Dunkin' Donuts from the station. You have uh, a New Jersey Transit eastbound train coming in uh, from Morrisville. You have a westbound Keystone train 641 having just a part of the station and uh, worker present uh, to make sure that the train alert the crews to their presence. So next shot, which I, I guess I just teased just now, I call man on septa train, but not uh, your ordinary man on septa train. Um, the shot, as you see here, this wasn't what I was expecting to get, um, as you might expect. I was setting up simply to get the meat. Now, moments before the acela came through, you had this SEPTA set, which just terminated after coming from Philly, starting to pull out. And there's a guy knocking on the side of it. So the engineer stops the train. I don't know what the deal was. I don't know if he left something on board, was trying to get it before the train left, but, you know, was unhappy. So, you know, I set up the shot. And next thing I know, I look down from my camera and I see, oh, guy in front of the train. So fortunately, he seemed to have avoided injury. The cops responded quickly to haul him off. But definitely one of those things you don't expect to see. Uh, I mentioned positive train control earlier. So New Jersey Transit, um, after they had a lot of the cab cars taken care of, they still had a lot of the locomotives left. Um, by this point in 2019, uh, January 10th, you had um, a multi-level trailer um, with positive train control. Uh, you had Alp 46, 46 of one, which didn't have it uh, installed yet. Um, so to make the train compliant, you needed something leading it that had the PTC and here 7,005 filled that role. Uh, here we have another example. We have um, the old fair tower uh, at the east end of the station. 
um, where some of the interlockings are located as well. And we have another one of these sets. This is multi-level car 7010, uh, as I recall, uh, notably missing the number from the door on the end here. Um, but this was for a little while, one of those other odd things you'd see on the Hoboken division, you had some of the diesel trains set up in a similar manner. So just one of those quirky things that was cool to catch what was going on. Uh, February 10th, 2019, we have an eastbound regional on track one, uh, engineer coming out to check on the wipers while the train's making its station stop. We have the SEPTA Silver Liner 4 set on track four. And, uh, you know, with uh, the ad on the Silver Liner 5 parked on the storage track, I couldn't resist uh, setting up uh, this particular composition. March 4th, 2019, we have uh, the Vermonter coming in on track one, crossing over at the west end of the station to make the station stop. A couple of passengers waiting to board. Again, we're looking west from track one at the station. We have a uh, SEPTA uh, ACS 64. By this point, it's 2019. The AEM7s have been retired from SEPTA's fleet, crossing under the old Bordentown secondary where the river line uh, operates on. Um, Trenton being the terminus for the river line as well. On uh, an eastbound northeast regional, we have the Department of Transportation Inspection Car, DOTX 216. Um, it's used for, I believe, high speed inspections, and it's, it's an old Bud Metro liner. Um, I think this theater window on the back uh, may have only been installed in the past two years. Um, this is an overhead look uh, similar to the view we saw earlier with 642 from South Clinton Avenue. Um, we're looking east, track uh, four and five on the left, track one where the train is making it stop, and track two being uh, to the right. Who doesn't love a Big Mac and Coke? Trenton Transit Center has a McDonald's, so uh, when I got worried that the this uh, ACS 64, the wrapped polar bear was coming through during the lunch hour. I couldn't, you know, it, it just seemed like the natural thing to do. So, you know, here, uh, this gives you a better profile than I had given you earlier. Uh, this particular shop, December 19th, 2019. A few days later, it's Christmas Eve. Perfect time to catch uh, the SEPTA holiday train. Uh, besides decorating some of their trolleys for the holidays, they decorated a regional rail train um, with holiday themed decorations. So here, uh, having just gotten out of work on Christmas Eve, uh, as luck would have it, uh, the holiday train was here at the station, uh, just running a normal revenue service. Um, but you know, you go inside and it's nicely decorated, much as uh, Tri-State likes to do with the Santa train that we hope to run uh, this year as we've run many years in the past. So, you know, you have everything from candy canes to snowflakes, uh, it's even a Christmas tree, uh, decorations from Frozen for the kids. So, you know, a really cool thing Septon did. Uh, uh, a nice change from the ordinary. And another shot of Polo Bear from January of 2020. Um, you know, as you can see, I have a little bit of a lens flare going on. Um, since the lighting wasn't so great at this time, I figured I'd try a pan shot. So, you know, I think with the ma message being share the magic on Amtrak, I just sort of love the, you know, I just think that the, the uh, little bit of lens flare actually kind of works well with it. Uh, I hope you guys agree. Uh, June of 2020, we have um, the eastbound Pennsylvania coming into the station. We have uh, Lambert's Point, which I mentioned to you earlier, uh, one of the private cars. These three are all under the same ownership. We have the former Pennsylvania uh, parlor, eight bedroom, one drawing room, uh, car, Colonial Crafts. I think it's the only survivor of uh, its kind. Um, and we have ex Boston and Maine 664, Cloudsbury Beach. So, you know, here's Pennsylvania coming in from Philly and Pittsburgh and route to New York. We have another Pennsylvania. This one is head west. Now, I wish I had realized it at the time the train was pulling in. If you look closely, um, I say this because I wish I had gotten a closer shot of this. We have uh, ACS 64, 645. And uh, 
this little red mark below it is a Pennsylvania Railroad sticker somebody stuck on it. And from what I understand, there's at least one P42 where somebody stuck on a New York Central sticker. So, uh, you know, perhaps the most fitting train of all, you know, to have the Pennsylvanian with uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad decal on it. I'm not sure if this decal is still there, um, but certainly, you know, pay close attention if you see 645 coming, take a look and get a good shot if it's still there. Uh, this shot, by the way, uh, is from November 2nd of 2020. So uh, just quickly, uh, Trenton, uh, since it's a station I've been at frequently, I've been able to catch a few specials on some of the Amtrak company cars. So just want to briefly highlight them. Um, Chamber of Commerce for New Jersey um, traditionally runs a charter train in late February, early March. So we have the 2019 edition of the train coming in here. Uh, we have the 2020 edition of the train here. Um, I think there had been some controversy with some of the behavior, some of the patrons, so the 2020 train had to go a little short. Going back a couple of years to December 16, 2016, um, we have uh, on the Carolinian, four Amtrak company cars for the price of one. Um, two cars up front are um, ex-Union Pacific Sleeper, Pacific Bend, and Pacific Cape. We have a uh, ex Amfleet coach converted to a uh, company service and business car, 1001, the Beach Grove, made for Amtrak's main mechanical shops. At the very rear, we have um, the Viewliner theater car, 1004, American View. So Pacific Bend um, was built for the 1950, built in 1950 for the Union Pacific, converted to head-end power um, in 1977. After view liners took over revenue sleeper service, it was converted to a crew dorm car, um, serving in that night way until 2007. Um, it was later used as a command, as a car by the Amtrak Police Department for, I think, certain communications operations, uh, briefly renamed Pacific Command in line with that. And then in 2011, with Amtrak's 40th anniversary, um, the car was put into the classic phase three paint scheme you see here, and it had the Pacific Bend name restored. So the train, uh, it was part of the train that toured the country. Um, it was used as orders for the crews of these trains, um, touring initially for Amtrak's 40th anniversary and then continuing um, after for events like National Train Day. Uh, behind it in this shot, Pacific Cape, um, converted to head-end power in 1980, converted to a crew dorm in 1999. Um, in 2008, uh, you know, it, it was retired in the mid, late 2000s as a dorm. 2008, it was rolled out as um, a car for company service, as I understand it, used for the Amtrak and Office Inspector General. It was given the name Pacific Patrol, um, but uh, later on the Pacific Cape name was restored and uh, was put into phase three paint and might have been around the same time in 2011, um, though I, I'm not sure for a certain offhand. Uh, looking at the Carolinian going away, that same train that same morning, um, Beach Grove is the second to last car. Um, started out life as Amphlete 184 seat coach 21222. Um, converted to company service. It was used for track geometry, used for transporting company executives. So it has a few sleeper rooms in there. It has sort of a lounge area. Um, for a brief time in 2020, it was used uh, equipped with LIDAR scanning, which is basically a laser uh, scan. Uh, temporarily had the name Bayer Delaware, but the Beach Grove name is returned to it. And it's again in company service. Um, at the very rear, we have the Viewliner theater car, American View. Um, fun history for this car, and, uh, uh, one of my favorites. It uh, started life in the late 1980s as a prototype viewliner sleeping car, uh, one of the last car shells built by the Bud Company. Um, the sleeping car was completed in-house by Amtrak and rolled out, I think, about 1988. Um, in after the viewliner after the 50 revenue view liners, 50 production view liners came into service in 1995 and 1996, give or take, uh, 2301 was taken out of service. It reemerged in November 2001 as car 62091, given the name Eastern View. 
Um, I don't know if it ever ran in revenue service while it was floating around the system uh, after it reemerged in 2001, but um, it did, it was certainly used as a crew car at times. And I actually, it was, uh, it happened to Deadhead on one of the times I took the Silver Meteor. So I got a kick out of seeing, you know, such a unique car at that time. Uh, in the, the car was later converted to a theater car in the 2010s. Um, I forget the exact year offhand. Let me see if I have it in there. Right. March 2014 is when uh, it emerged as a theater car. Um, incidentally, American View was the name of the first production viewliner sleeper, but the sleepers uh, lost their names in um, mid 2000s, early 2010s. We have a corridor clipper, car 1002. Um, for a long time, it served as a track geometry car and a catenary inspection car. It, it had a catenary, uh, it had a pantograph mounted on top of it for checking the catenary. Um, however, the next car you'll see um, now fills that purpose. Um, it's still used for track, track geometry purposes. It too started off life as a, an Amfleet 184 seat coach. Um, 21191 to be specific. Um, now the catenary measurement is uh, handled by this car, car 1005. Uh, originally started off life as a Bud Metro liner. Uh, later on, it was converted as a coach for Michigan service. Um, it was a, originally Metro liner club car 884, the Michigan coach 44553 in September 1991. By 2005, it was stored. Um, in 2012 and 2013 is when it was converted into a catenary measurement car uh, and it was put into service December of 2013. So here you see it and quarter clipper on the rear of a Westbound Regional. And uh, we had very recently uh, Beach Grove come through the corridor here in New Jersey. Um, you had Secretary of Transportation Pete Gouverneur Judge and uh, members of Congress, including Senator Charles Schumer, um, get on this special. Um, the train came up to Newark where the delegation boarded. Uh, the delegation, including the Secretary, got an inspection tour of the um, Hudson, the North River tunnels, showing them the damage um, that Amtrak's dealing with. Um, so after that, the set returned to its home base in Washington. So you see it um, during the lunch hour, heading back to Washington, DC. We get to our uh, last point here, uh, the Trenton and Morrisville Railroad Bridge. Um, it replaced earlier spans that had been built in 1892 and 1894. Um, it was part of the uh, grade separation project in Trenton. The bridge, um, here you see it's a set of arrow police crossing. Um, New Jersey Transit, I, I forgot to mention before, used to use a yard at the east end of the Trenton Transit Center, East Barracks Yard. Um, I think it was in the early 2000s is when they opened Morrisville Yard. And um, that is today where um, trains go generally after the terminate, except for the occasional odd train or two that turn that turns on the station. Um, here, the, the bridge you see runs across the Delaware River, next to New Jersey to Morrisville, New, uh, Morrisville, Pennsylvania. First shot was from May 17th of this year. Um, I forgot to mention before, the bridge came in service in 1903. It's 1,150 feet long with 63 feet being its longest span. Um, and again, that first shot here was uh, May 17th, 2021. Uh, this shot coming from July 9th, 2020, shows a couple of young men uh, fishing in the river on the Morrisville side. Um, at this point in 2020, um, there was only one Keystone service round trip running through New Jersey because of the pandemic. So here, this was train 653, the only westbound running at that time. You know, we're now at a point where more Keystones, more regionals have been restored to the schedule as people start to head back to the rails. July 9th, 2020, I stopped off for a few shots of the bridge. This is not uh, the Jersey side, this is Morrisville. Um, 
this line here has a little bit of street running connecting uh, a Conrail shared assets trackage to uh, the Staley plant nearby. So kind of cool, you have the train running right past the Dairy Queen. Um, you can see this here, it's on its way to the Staley plant, the Trenton and Morrisville Bridge is behind us. Here's um, the inbound move uh, running uh, onto the street and under the Trenton and Morrisville Bridge. Uh, here, uh, a little while later, probably about half an hour or so, uh, we have the Conrail Shared Assets Local making its return run. Um, and again, behind it, under uh, above it, is the uh, Trenton Morrisville Bridge. Uh, here we have a SEPTA Silver Liner Four step uh, heading across. I think it, I think this particular one may have been uh, Trenton bound, uh, though I don't recall for certain. And then we get to um, our last shot, uh, and uh, a little bit of nature to go along with uh, a little bit of man-made technology. Uh, a timely geese crossing uh, across the Delaware here uh, as a westbound regional crosses the bridge. So um, as you can see, this has uh, been a little bit of the history of the Northeast Corridor through New Jersey, uh, as viewed by some contemporary photography. Um, I hope uh, all of you enjoyed it. And um, I, I know we'll have a few parting words, but I also want to remind you that uh, same time next week, seven o'clock, we'll have author Todd DeFeo, um, who has a book out on the Northeast Quarter, who I'm sure will dig a little deeper into the history, give you some stuff from the archives. So I would definitely encourage all of you to tune in. So here, uh, done with the screen share, done with the presentation. Rich, you want to take it over? Sure, thanks Adam for a very informative presentation. Um, your photography is just phenomenal. Um, you know, a lot of our presentations focus on like the 60s, 70s, and even the 50s and all the transition that was happening and there. And it really struck me through your photography how much has changed even in the last 10 years. Um, so that was definitely great to see. Um, so if anyone has any questions for Adam, we'd be happy to give them to him. Um, there were a few that I saw, so. Uh, All right, so I, I pulled them up here. I, I see sure. um, first question is what camera do I use? Um, I typically use a Canon EOS 80D. Um, I have an older Rebel T1i as my backup. Um, I shoot generally with Tamron lenses, uh, which as I know is another question here. Um, the range on that is, if I recall correctly, it's 70 to 150. Um, and then I have another one that's, um, what's the newer one I started using? It's, um, I, I have a newer wide angle lens that's I think um, in a much shorter range. I think it's about 25 millimeter to, I think it's 12 to 25 millimeters as I recall correctly. Um, I have an F1.8 lens uh, for 50 millimeters that I break out on occasion. A lot of what you see me shooting here is with the 70 to 200 um, shots. Um, except for some of the newer wide angles. For example, um, the February shot of uh, 4636 and the touch and its sunset is one of those with that wide angle lens. Um, you know, the Tamarins do a lot of great things and um, definitely if you want to get a good lens but not pay the uh, manufacturer price, um, you, you know, the Canon or Nikon or what have you manufacturer price, it's um, certainly a good brand for that purpose. And um, I would encourage you to support your local camera shop. I know Livingston Camera has been a great resource for me in Livingston, New Jersey, um, and there are a lot of other great shops out there. Um, it's a uh, question was APS-C or full frame. So uh, it's, uh, it is an APS-C sensor. Um, it's, the ADD is sort of mid-range between, um, you know, when you get into some of the really high-end cameras Canon has and the Rebel. So uh, it's not quite full frame. Um, I, I do occasionally, I also mentioned shoot with an Olympus mirrorless camera, not my primary camera, but I do break it out on occasion, especially if I want a geotag. Um, the Linden shots you saw from July 1st are an example of some of my photography with that camera. Uh, I see there's a question on uh, Monmouth Junction. Um, 
Yeah, Midway Tower is uh, roughly where uh, the Monmouth Junction station was. I think the station itself was at the tower or just east of it. Um, those with a little more knowledge of the history um, can answer that better than I, but I, I, but I seem to recall it being uh, like immediately east of Midway Tower, but in that general area. Uh, so I think that's it for the questions. Rich, is there anything you're seeing I missed? Uh, oh, oh do, do I get hassle taking all these pictures from platforms and elsewhere? So occasionally you get somebody, you might get a crew member who's a little aggressive, might try to intimidate you a little. Um, occasionally I've had the New Jersey Transit Police approach me to ask what's going on, but um, I, I haven't really had a problem. You know, if you encounter the New Jersey Transit Police, they're professional, they understand the rules, explain what you're doing. If you're on the platform doing non-commercial photography, if you're not using a tripod, if you're not interfering with operations, you're good to go. You know, just explain what you're doing and you'll be fine. Um, if a crew member shouts at you, uh, so be it. Um, I mean, the one other thing you can do is take down the number of the New Jersey Transit Police Dispatcher. And if you think you're gonna get called in, tell them who you are, um, just so that uh, they know what's going on as well. Um, you may get asked to present the ID, but generally speaking, if you're not getting in the way of people um, and you're not trespassing, you're fine. Uh, I think that takes care of it now, Rich, unless there's anything else you see. Uh, there is one question in the chat from uh, Greg LaPierre. It says, how do you annotate your images? So I upload a lot of my images to railpictures.net. So um, with that, I, I, I retain a lot of the information that way. Um, I edit in Adobe Lightroom a lot. So um, when I'm in there, it has the option for putting a title in. So I might put the train number and where I am in, in uh, the title as an option for the metadata. Um, there's also a mobile version of Lightroom sometimes I use for that purpose as well. Um, occasionally, I think I've used tags just using Windows, but Lightroom makes it very easy. So that's, um, you know, if, if you're serious about editing, it's a good piece of software. And it's one way of um, entering uh, extra data on your photos, like for titles or notes uh, in that regard. Okay, I think that wraps up our questions. Uh, so again, thank you, Adam. Uh, that was a wonderful presentation. I think everyone who attended definitely enjoyed it. Uh, so uh, thank you everyone for attending tonight's presentation with Tri-State. Uh, reminder, next week, one week from tonight, uh, we have another Northeast Corridor presentation from author Todd DeFeo. Uh, so please log on to tristaterail.org forward slash meetings. Uh, you'll see it listed there and please go ahead and register. So good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.